They say it's a measure of success when people know you by your first name. In Canada, everyone knows Sam. My brother used to say, you know, Sam, Sam, the dirty old man, uh, combs his hair with a frying pan. And it just struck me that, you know, uh, maybe I can call myself Sam the Record Man. And I tell you, it was a big step. And, and I really was scared of doing it. And I remember the psychiatrist that looked after me. And I'd say, you know, what's going to happen? Am I going to get anything out of all these hours and the money I'm spending? He says, well, he says, Sam, knowing you, you're going to become famous and make a fortune. <laughs> he was right. Known to one and all as Sam the Record Man, started out selling records for the old RCA Victor label. In those days, it was the Vinyl 78. Then along came the LP. And who could forget the 8-track? Well, everybody forgot it when the cassette came along. And finally, the compact disc. Sam has been there for every innovation in sound recording. And along the way, he became godfather to the Canadian music industry. Sam the record man had one little bitty store, and he was the only one in it. He worked it by himself. He didn't have any of the black music up here at the time, but he could order it. So I got to be good friends with him back before he became the big Sam the man. So do you remember the sign when it went up the first? Well, I remember that. I, I, said, I told him, I said, boy, Sam, you're in a big time now. I said, Ray Charles can see that sign. Gordy? Yeah? What are you going to be when you grow up? A great hockey player. And you, Pierre? Prime Minister, of course. Sam? I'm going to have the best chain of record stores in Canada with great music and great prices. Listen. Get it. Great music, great prices. The Montreal Sam the Record Man is one of the lucky ones. It will stay open, at least for now. In the immediate future, we're looking at a, uh, sales across Canada, continued, continued business. The stores will be open, and uh, we'll be operating from Halifax, Montreal, Toronto, three locations in Toronto, and Vancouver. 26 others across the country closed for good today, and 80% of Sam's employees were given the pink slip. The closures come one day after the coast-to-coast -coast chain declared bankruptcy. Uh, Sam's an institution, you know, a national institution, and, and for them to fold, basically, is, uh, it, hurt, it has hurt everybody in the industry. Sam's is under receivership. It will try over the next several months to restructure and stay afloat. The company owes $15 million to creditors. The 32-year-old music store chain became a victim of tough competition. Sam? That's what the first Sam the Record Man store used to look like. Who's that, Grandpa? That's what I used to look like. Gee, Grandpa. Now you watch this. I said it, I did it. Great music, great prices. For the uninitiated, Sam's is just a record store. But who comes to take pictures of a store? Inside what was once a shrine to Canadian music, is a shell of its former self. Today, on the last day the store will ever open its doors, the walls that once showed off so much history are bare, and only the most obscure CDs remained on the shelves. At the height of its popularity, there were 150 stores across Canada, none more visible than the Toronto store with its iconographic twin discs. Sam's first opened in 1961. Almost immediately, it seemed to connect with customers. It used to be the place to go in Toronto for cutting-edge music. It sold rock and roll before anybody else and helped launch countless Canadian acts. In the first quarter of this year, Canadians bought 7.1 million CDs, compared to 10.2 million in the same period last year. That's the worst sales decline of any country in the world. I could see that happening with the whole internet MP3 thing. Today, the one piece they weren't able to save closed its doors. For the hardcore music fan, it was a chance to get their hands on some of the most rare rock and roll memorabilia in the city. Hundreds of items, some decades old. Everything from autographed pictures to platinum albums to the neon signs that hang inside the store. 
selling for anywhere from five to thousands of dollars. This auction marks the end of Sam the Record Man, a Toronto landmark that's been here for 70 years. But as announced a month ago, it's closing its doors for good this Saturday. It's a bittersweet moment for the 125 or so customers who registered for the auction. That's pretty exciting. You know, it's also a little, I guess, sad that you know one of Canada's you know musical institutions, you know, and retail is you know coming to an end. I used to come down here as a kid buying all my stuff. The only place you could get imported stuff that you couldn't find anywhere else. So this is a good spot to get it. So I'm going to miss this store. One item that won't be auctioned off are the neon vinyl records that hang out front. They've been preserved by the city as they're considered a Toronto landmark. As well, a few other items will be kept by the owners, Sam Snyderman's sons, who decided not to be here. However, Sam's grandson, Zach, did drop in to watch. It's not a bad story. It's, uh, it's nice that we're able to give back to the community and, and share part of the store with the community. It's, uh, it's going into much better hands than just sort of sitting in the basement uh, collecting dust. The priceless memorabilia will now be in the hands of some of Sam's best customers. Is what the family believes Sam would have wanted. For Global News, this is Nathan Downer reporting. So why aren't Sam's iconic spinning neon discs back in their rightful spot? Ryerson University now owns the sign and had plans to resurrect it, but that's before the cost estimates came in. It's about a quarter of a million dollars approximately to refurbish it, and it's one that is just an energy hog. The school has decided to look at other ways to pay tribute to the legacy, leaving the sign dismantled and stored away. In the days before the iconic music merchant's death, the city reached out to him for advice, but Sam Snyderman's response was not what you might expect. He himself currently today does not have an emotional attachment or a real strong opinion one way or the other to keep the signs or not. The generation that remembers the store would like to see the sign back up. It's a part of our community and it's been here for forever. You'd like to see it back up. Rock and roll. Well, if you were alive in Canada back when the latest music still came out on records, you know the power and the reach one music store had. Long before downloads, Sam the Record Man was the place to buy albums and tapes. The man who founded it, Sam Snyderman, didn't just love music. He was an unwavering supporter of Canadian musicians. Snyderman died Sunday at the age of 92. Mike Drolet looks back at his life and his influence. There was a time Sam the Record Man was a destination in Toronto. Sam Snyderman opened his flagship store in 1961, and for decades it was the place to get records. So popular, in fact, Sam accepted the fine when it was illegal to open on Boxing Day. Well, there's the reason right, right there. You know, people want us to be open. Did they ever? His library of over 400,000 titles brought in Canadians from far and wide, including a young David Mervish. Look, you couldn't have been... In, in, in the early 60s without Sam and, and not be standing there waiting for a record. Sam's as a chain is, of course, no more. The Young Street store in Toronto closed in 2007. To the under 30 crowd, it's just another construction site. You know what was here before? No, actually. No idea? No. no. You remember the big discs? No. But in his heyday, Sam Snyderman was the champion of Canadian music. Back in those early days, you know, if you sold five of them to... Uh, uh, in the store, it was because the grandparents were still alive. It didn't always make financial sense, but over time he helped launch acts like The Guess Who and Gordon Lightfoot. To Sam, Canadian acts were just as good as anything coming out of the U.S. or Britain. Sam, any local band that put out a record, he'd stock it and often he'd front rack it. So you'd have Jimi Hendrix, The Doors, and Perth County Conspiracy right beside each other. He had his missteps, thinking the Beatles couldn't sing. When I came to the store one day and I heard the Beatles playing outside on the loudspeaker. I said, take this junk off. It'll never go. He also thought his chain, which was once the largest in Canada, would never go. But who could have predicted the power of the download? But even the collapse of his empire doesn't diminish what he created or the doors he opened for so many. What Sam was, what he represented, that time has uh, gone by. So 
it's sad, and I'm really sad that the man passed on because he's a great, great person. Sam Snyderman was 92. Mike Drolet, Global News, Toronto. See the people walking up and down See the people moving all around On the streets of my hometown On Young Street On the street in the world they say Summertime soon slips away Everywhere.